hate to break the fishing news up, Graham Chuck, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get today. Welcome to the Real Life Podcast, the only podcast that consistently talks over its intro. Could Got we it. Just, oh, is that? Oh, could have muted it. Ah, well. The other thing we could do to I avoid all doing. of this <laughs> is I could just start splicing in the intro after. No. And we just, no. We can't talk over the intro no. all the time. Why not? Well, this is already annoying enough to listen to for our 18 <laughs> listeners. Do you really want to make it even more annoying? I disagree. Okay. So we have no reviews for this podcast. We'd love story. more. Please leave some nation. Re- oh, no, we do it. We oh, my God, we have a bunch. Jesus. Oh, Tyler. my. I was, looking at, I was looking at the DFO rundown. Not this one. Oh, yeah. We got three fresh reviews. Should we start with reviews? Start three with fresh reviews. loafs. Yep. All right. Here we go. This one comes in from Anderson BD 42. Five stars. Let's go Oilers. Listener since day one. Fantastic podcast with an awesome mix of Oilers talk and stories from real life from a fun group of people. I had to write it now to tell you that the dental hygiene conversation coming out of the Jasper trip is the single most horrified I have been. <laughs> Sorry. And then the review cut off. So I got to click in to go read the rest of it. That's how passionate this person was. Uh, nation real life. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. Is the single most horrified I've been listening to a podcast, and I've listened to my share of true crime murder shows. Brush your teeth and go Oilers. So after that, <laughs> I tried. To, uh, what I did was on the Nation Real Life group chat. I was going to keep the boys uh, abreast of my challenge to brush my teeth daily. <laughs> I got to day two. <laughs> Day three, I fell off the wagon. I got back on on day four. And then day five, six was a real mess. And then I traveled. So day seven was okay. But yeah, we're not. I didn't really hit my stride like I thought I might be able to. Uh, So this gets brought up in a ton of social situations for me now. (laughs) And the one thing that came up at my family dinner yesterday Uh was, why don't you just get a second toothbrush? Because I have... because. I am okay. <laughs> little I, bit, I have three. A little bit of a diva. Okay. Well, I um ultrasonic. Yep. I've been coddled in my toothbrushing ways, and I only have one electric. And I really can't be bothered to be doing it the old fashioned way. Um but how I just are we don't talking about? like aren't those like thirty five dollars? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I don't, I don't buy them. I don't well, go to the store. Three hundred. And I the, feel like the, the odometer entries. on your current unit is like two kilometers. Here's the irony of it all. I think to myself, why would I do it with, with not an electric toothbrush? It doesn't even do a very good job. Mm-hmm. So I just don't do it at all. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, let's go back to the reviews. This one from SMEM203. Five stars as well. Always good for a laugh. I absolutely love listening to the podcast. Chalmers never fails to make me laugh from his dental hygiene routine to burst pipes and broken TVs. I love the banter he brings to the podcast and always look forward to Mondays and Thursdays. There should have been a note. Look forward to Mondays and Thursdays, the odd time Chalmers. When is there he shows up. Them. I'd like to add to that uh, review with my own words that Chalmers rewards our listeners who clearly have an affinity for him with an atrocious attendance record mm-hmm. and a commitment to bits. That's even worse. Uh, 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 I, my wife not pumped i brought that up <laughs> like new wow. keep it 100 coming later She's in today's probably episode hearing about it. yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> they're getting like that news. mrs chalmers had separate conversations with both tyler and i about the revelation on yeah. that saturday night in jasper it's yeah excellent yeah i got threatened with not getting any more kisses which uh is a problem in my relationship <laughs> we're gonna need those we're gonna yeah. need them kisses i'm gonna Sometimes need them I'm gonna need them <laughs> oh if i walk in and don't get a kiss i feel get very self-conscious no i look we're gonna get better it's a year of getting <laughs> better one year. day at a time uh, or just win your battles just win my oh, battles next one i like the title of the next one yeah next one from pollard 27 is dental hygiene five stars <laughs> oh for christ's Jesus sake Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> many months ago i wrote a review talking about how i respected the fact that you guys were able to sit in the same room as chalmers with his completely unwashed lower half <laughs> After finding out that the only dental care he practices is scraping the flat off his teeth with a lock pick. (laughs) I now believe you should all receive medals of honor for your courage. You show every week to be in the same podcast studio as a walking cloud of smog. I salute you and thank you for your service. God bless. Thank you. Pig pen from fucking. I'm going to append to that review too. I've known Chalmers since 1994. I've never known him. 
to have an off smell ever. <laughs> not on a roadie, not hung over, not it's ever. My great, it's my greatest gift. It's some sort of fucking gift. It's there, some sort of. There is something. I, why is Bull Bull so tall? Why does Chalmers never stink? <laughs> Connor McDavid, the gift of skating fast. Yeah. Chalmers never smells bad. I can count on, stink. I can count on one knuckle. <laughs> with no fingers up how many times people have told me I have bad breath and offered me a piece of gum. Yeah. Just don't stay. And it has to do with the fact that everything's sealed in there tight. With the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> tight seal. <laughs> it's a tight seal. Can we read one from Oilers Nation Radio just because the title is Rick's a bitch? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get that out. What happened? <laughs> oh, it's so good. It made me laugh. <laughs> Love the pod, but getting tired of the big baby when people don't agree with him. If he acts this here, I can't imagine him getting along with anyone in life. Grow up, dude. <laughs> Why does he get very... Does He's he very, get... Um, he he loves how do you say it? No matter like he loves Passionate. the Oilers to a fault, and no matter what we're talking about, the counter angle is always that the organization is correct. Yes, always. The thing about Rick, but that's though, what makes it fun, though. In real life, he's the calmest man ever. Uh huh. It's just the Oilers that get him worked up. Yeah, he's very easy to get along with in real life. That's very. why it works. One of the nicest people I've met. One of the more Absolutely. popular people in town. Like that's actually not even an exaggeration. It isn't. Either. Yes. It isn't. So he's easy to deal with Mr. Whatever the fuck. Yeah. Mr. Hammer Hamilton. <laughs> oh boy. He's got a hog. Oh no. I'm guessing or a hammer potentially. You never know, but he's from Hamilton. Mm -hmm. That's what we assume. Uh, <laughs> all right. There you go. Those are our reviews to uh, start this week's episode of the podcast, which is brought to you by DoorDash for a limited time. Our Canadian listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and enter the code nation 25, that's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the code NATION25. I went virtual golfing this weekend. I and saw. The, and the virtual golfing place, they're like, yeah, hey, drinks. Yeah, yeah. And they go, hey, if you want food, by the way, we're cool if you guys just DoorDash in here. Set us as the oh, address. The Unreal. Best. Yeah. Unreal. The then the world's your oyster. Yeah. Like, it's better than, like, a place... If it was just like, oh, I yeah, know here's our menu, like fries. And Imagine whatever. that's the restaurant of the future. It's just places to sit that you order DoorDash to. What is it called? The Double Dash? Yeah, Double Dash. I did that on Friday. What's that? Oh, yeah. You, it, you can get multiple stops on a single DoorDash order without any additional fees. I don't know if God intended us to live like this. Well, oh, it's when they scooped up my Donair and also got me McFlurry on the same run. That's nice. That's that is good. That is, unbelievable. that is a good. Your combo. delivery fee should be more money than your meal at that point. Should be. Not this way. Point. DoorDash. Do you think, so how do they know that the McFlurry is not going to be all melted and stuff if you order them both at oh the same God. time? Well, listen, I don't know the science of this. They're, all that's, I know is No, that I'm saying like, it's, that's incredible. They, they can put that piece together. Things. No, I'm not all complicating it. Is that I got both. The donut was still hot. Pop the McFlurry in the freezer until I was ready. Veteran play. It's good to go. But it arrived go. fine, right? It arrived great. There you go. Yeah, I could have enjoyed it there right then all. and there. It arrived. I fine. think it's all um, I, I think that was more of a compliment to them for figuring out the logistics. They figured out the science. Of the of order hot of food and a cold food, food coming first. at the same time. McFlurry second. They I am reach a, a middle ambient temperature. They're both melted and cold. Technology, and they they nailed it. Do they carry coolers in their car to put frozen stuff yeah, in? Yeah, like, yeah. like, like you have like like those little bags. Those little oh, so insulated. it's a cooler bags. and a heater? What do you think? The guy just throws it in his cup they holder and drives rack. over? <laughs> they got a Turn roof the fan rack. off. It's no. just like you got that little beer cooler that you've got. They well, I guess I just assume that those bags that they carry their food in is just for hot. He's, and if no, you put something cold, 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 this is going back to the fish story again. Think about your cooler. Your cooler can keep heat in and cool. This goes back to the fish story. This is literally the first time thinking about it. So I'd appreciate if you guys stopped yelling at me. I hope Pat enjoys the fact that we're mentioning his fish story again, which yeah, was an atrocious, atrocious story. story. It's so disgusting. Yeah, oh. Tell the story. You know what? The lucky one with the Chalmers tooth thing is that it totally buried the Pat fish story. <laughs> the Pat fish Give story. us the gist of the story. Long story oh. short, Pat Puff kept a fish in a cooler for many hours to keep the cold out. Yes, and this is must have stemmed from the fact that Tyler had a cooler full of beer in the out in outside in the back of his truck. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's going to freeze it. And then Pat proceeded to explain about how he had a fish in a cooler. Yeah. A live fish? Yes. Uh, well, then we found out at the end it was live. We initially had a fish. He goes, I had a fish in a cooler. And when you when you when you say it that way, I was assuming like a side like of salmon. A slab mm, of salmon in the fish. Yeah. In Ooh, the I'd love cooler. one. And we were all like, all right, Pat, like, cool, like man. Sure. He's like, yeah, I bought it. I bought it as a gift. It's like a gag gift. I'm like, this is still <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not making it better. And then he's like, Oh yeah, I know it was a live fish. I'm yeah, like, it was a live fish. This is yeah. still the worst story I've ever heard. How does this make the beers 
not frozen. I ruined a brand new Yeti cooler by placing a freshly cooked brisket in it in butcher paper for that like two hour sit. Really? Why did I ruin it? Because it stinks still. I can't oh, get the stinks. smell out. Your beers stink like, like a brisket? delicious. I just brisket? don't use it anymore. It smells great, but like when I want to put like ice and beer and use the ice for a Ryan Coke. I can't think of anything I like that I wouldn't like better if it tasted like brisket. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Smoked Listen, ice. Listen, now's an opportunity ice? to brisket up those Ryan Cokes. You know, <laughs> okay, this is actually going to tie into my keeping it 100, so maybe oh, I won't. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> the, the dome? Where, where is the uh, Undertaker Just a free coming out of the coffin? <laughs> <laughs> my bit. <laughs> my bit. Oh, fuck. I don't got nothing for you. All right. Ah. Are, you, um, are you doing this? You want me to do it right now? Are we ripping her it's like off right now? I mean, it's not. It's, it's not. all I can give you for an intro. It's getting hot in here. It's getting, like, it, that's part of the segue is you, you, you announce okay. the segue and you then do the thing you're well, segueing. Sure. Into. I will keep it 100 right now. Smoked things. <laughs> not good. <laughs> what? Anything that is smoked is exponentially worse to me smoked than salmon? if it smoked wasn't. Salmon is delicious. Delicious. Favorite food. I want to be a grill master smoker more than anything in the world. I think it's just cool. I'll get a plaid, a plaid. What do they call them? Apron. Apron. I'll grow a must. I'll just have a mustache. I'll put on like plaid shoes and I want to be a smoker, a little beanie, but I smoked a brisket for the first time. Just picture a, what a smoking guy would look like who also does woodworking on the side. Mm-hmm. That's what I would like to look the like. Maybe a chain a on my wallet, something like that, right? The meat. Yeah. So I got a smoker. I smoked a brisket and I found out really quickly, I don't like the taste of smoked meat. And it goes even further than that. Okay. <laughs> I love scotch. I hate the taste of smoked scotch, like well, the peaty, scotch, peaty, the peaty scotch, ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Matt. Same thing with tequila. <laughs> Can't stand it. Mezcal. I had an old fashioned the other day. 100% one of the best old fashions I ever had. Then my brother-in-law orders the smoked old fashioned. It was exponentially worse. 10 times worse. It made it disgusting. I do not like anything smoked. Smoked salmon. No. Uh. What about smoked cigarettes? What? Nope. Charles, they are walk bad me too. Through smoke Gross. Salmon. You do understand the irony in you hating things that I are don't smoked. smoke. Wink. <laughs> 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 you guys. Trip darts. Trip when darts. Trip darts when don't count. in row, trip darts don't count. A cigarette, one cigarette at two thirty in the morning to cap off a beautiful night of beer pong doesn't make me a smoker. No. Sets the tone. <laughs> and you <laughs> don't like smoked meat. And I don't like smoked meat. Considering you yourself are smoked meat. The irony is delicious. Unlike <laughs> the smoked meat, which you have problems. These are falsities. <laughs> is that a word? Sure. Yeah. Ish. Ish. So that's my giving 100. I wish, but I can't fake it uh, so now to become you smoke, the person I want to be. I have a feeling that's going to be a, well, an unpopular take. I cook I beef jerky. I cook yeah, beef jerky. It's delicious. Right. But I cooked it. In two different ways. You One, I cooked very slow and long, more of a smoking. It was not as good as cooking it shorter at a little bit of a higher temperature and not getting that smoke taste. What are you going to do with your smoker now, though? <sighs> good question. You bought one? I have one. I cook okay. everything on it, but I just... You can cook things on it without smoking them. Okay. Yeah. So, I still... Maybe like, I found the right, like... Maybe you need a different wood, wood chip. Yeah. yeah. I've tried them all. They have like four different types of wood chips and none of them, like, let's be honest here. Let me keep it 100 too. The difference between an apple smoke chip and a, <laughs> and a, uh, what's the other ones they have? Like a honey one. Give me a break. They don't taste any different. They're the exact same damn thing. Give me a break. Oh, mm. wow. What a. Hey, there is some offended people in the Apple wood smoke cheddar is chef's kit. Oh, I love it. Smoked salmon. I'm all over The it. best. The no, best food there is a smoked salmon. I'm all over smoked salmon. I, I want to be. Some things smoked might not be the best. Like maybe better unsmoked, but. Yeah, that's still I'm trying weird. to think of the last like smoked, smoked item I wings? had. Uh, we had a smoked turkey at my nephew's house for Thanksgiving. It was delightful, I thought. Yeah, for you. I mean, like a slow cooked one, yes. A traditionally smoked where that smoke is in every bite. It's just, it's too much. It's just too much. It's not my thing. All right. Tyler, thoughts? I'm trying to think of some other unpopular food takes that I have to like couple with this. Well, you probably have a bunch. Well, I don't know if I have unpopular food takes. I just have a really 
I have the palate of a 14 year old. Yeah, like tonight I'm burger. having hamburger helper. Nice. Oh, but that's amazing. I here's love here's helper. a food take. Tell me if you, if you agree with this, two of my favorite foods in the world are stew. I love a good stew. And chili. Love, mm. good chili. love stew and chili. Both from the same family. You could say. Yeah. But a little bit different. If you don't put yellow peaches and cream corn in your stew or your chili, get it off my table. I don't Ooh, want I do it. Love, I love get it away addition. from me. I'm not offended if it doesn't have it, but I love the addition. It Every just makes, stew you eat contains corn. It's like stuffing without cranberries in it. Ugh. Oh, little could, tiny dried cranberries and stuffing. Oh, delightful. Well, I, I'm also, I, well, I guess my unpopular food take is I don't like stuffing unless it's got meat in it. Hmm. Most like stuffing has meat in it, I think. I, say, I don't just meat. eat the stuffing straight up. It's always stuffing, gravy, and then and stuffing potatoes. with a bite of potatoes or with a bite mm-hmm. of meat. Then it gives it a nice little. You should see my like Thanksgiving dinner. I put the turkey here. I put the stuffing here. I put the potatoes here, gravy and all of it. The minute I sit down, it's a stew. Mm. It's all mixed together. Those are your with favorite the corn. foods? Those two? Both like yeah. portable via cup if you want. Yeah. Interesting. Like a, like a good shepherd's pie. Could you imagine having no corn in that? Get out of here. But that, like that, that, well, the recipe calls for corn. Right. But there is like some, most chilies don't call for corn. In my uh, going above and beyond is what you're saying. I just is this still the keep it 100. It yeah. makes it. <laughs> I think we. I think we moved on to weird food keep takes. It 1, right now. Oh, interesting <laughs> favorite foods. I couldn't. I, I don't think I could narrow it down. Like, like last real night. Italian pizza is my number one favorite food. When I went, I went. I never probably told you this. When I went to Italy with my wife for our honeymoon, I gained probably 25 pounds because we would sit down and I'd always want a pasta for dinner, traditional Italian pasta, but I couldn't pass up like a. Legit Neapolitan pizza. Oh, delightful. Ne- margarita. Margarita pizza. So I would oh, eat Neapolitan. like a full, Is it? it's oh, a it's style. Neapolitan. Yeah. Oh, like, style. so I would eat a full pizza for an appetizer and then still eat a pasta. Like I wouldn't say it was my favorite food, but last night I went out for a really nice steak, glass of red wine, some veg and the accoutrement on the side. Mm. Lovely. doesn't get better than that. Yeah, if I was on, if I had a last meal, death row kind of shit, steak, I'm a steak guy. It's fantastic. Well, my family's falling off of red meat. I don't know what it is. We it's not on purpose. It's just we don't. Okay, we, just, break. we used to have like we'll steak dinner once every week and a half, two weeks, and we don't have it during all boom anymore. Time. Yeah, <laughs> during boom time. <laughs> we was, Who can we afford was it? booming. Oh yeah, eating steak. And then we'd like, and we, we'd always make like thirty three percent more steak than we needed, so that Happy. the next day you slice it sliver style, grill it a little bit on a pan, and then put it in a, a sandwich, toasted yeah. bread so with with mustard cool. and re- and Along mayonnaise. That line, yes. oh, I got me good. missus to order a bigger steak last night than I knew she could handle because I was all for banging mm-hmm. up today. It's yep. Also great a little to sandwich. do the next morning, slice it real thin, throw it in a pan, and crack an egg on top of it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh that yeah. is elite. That's lovely. Leftover steak is the fucking play. Mm. Mm-hmm. Have you guys stayed at a hotel where you've gotten like a continental breakfast and they have those waffle makers? Yeah. yeah. They're perfect every time. Like you, they're just, I think it's incredible. They have it preheated at the right temperature. I find I can't toast a piece of toast in a hotel lobby to save my life, but this thing, you just dump in the batter and it's like the best waffles you can have so, is out of these three dollar like or these three minute machines i find that if you don't have one of those i i specifically notice like where we were just at in toronto mm-hmm. that breakfast was not great it was terrible it was all you had was a breakfast. big bowl of hard-boiled eggs yeah and a big bowl of fruit salad and that was essentially <laughs> were you in a mental institution <laughs> yeah. this was, a weird breakfast this was the free one for the silver elite bonvoy member yeah me which was jay so we had tail tail like the first level of so, status. Like Very this good. man is eating 18 hard you were, boiled eggs. You were hard tailing him to get a hard boiled egg. I had to, uh, Yeah, I had to, those are my options. Your I breakfast had. in grand Prairie was better. That was it. That was it. Yeah. At this restaurant, it was great. Like, like I would have loved a waffle iron, but no, I'm just crushing hard boiled yeah. eggs like a psycho. Oh, we made so many waffles this weekend. We were out of, yeah. So I apologize for not being here Thursday, even though Duxy calls me out daily for not being here. I appreciate your stick to itness, Duxy. Um, but well, at least he, someone's got to stick. To I something. know. But the man on the other side of the world, Chalmers, who he's knows coming how soon. End of Feb. End of Feb is that one? The best is how I always get the Twitter videos of him like drinking in our morning, which I realize is obviously his evening, yeah. Yeah. but it just makes me think he's just crushing beers in the morning. He does do that. Yeah. I think he does too. 1000% does. If that. He's got the day off. Yeah. He's giving it. If it's like a Saturday night game, which is Sunday morning, Australia, he is absolutely. We talk about how I don't have 
bodily smells. Like I, I smell really good. I actually smell really fucking good today. I'm Duke. sitting right beside Stone you. Paul no Joe. complaints. <laughs> Dukesy, he looks like he might have an, a little bit of a twing, a tinge to him. You think? Wow. A little bit. Wow. <laughs> you and him are going to get along so good. <laughs> you you know, you get you I can't wait to have see a drink it. off, but a smell off. When is yeah. he coming here? I bet he has better dental hygiene than you. Oh, for sure. I mean, most people do. Yes. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't know specifically his dates, but he's coming at the end of February. Cause like we just, he and I were talking over the weekend about how excited he is for the brunch for Ben on March 2nd. Excellent. That he will be attending. Perfect. Uh, should we talk a little about the, uh, the others? Well, what yes, we should. <laughs> I got to plug one thing. Yeah. I need help nation audience. I need some help. We need some help. We've got four spots left on the nation vacation. Ooh, to Phoenix. We've had four spots left for like two weeks. And it's because we're getting close to crunch time. I know for a if fact. You have any interest in coming, we got four spots. Let's make it happen. I know for a fact there's a four time. people out there who are contemplating, waiting for the last they're minute. The you need it. saying we got, be, and we have we have like four more days before we have to turn in all the names. So that's what I'm saying. Can this is your little push you? over the finish line. What can we let's incentivize for these four? I'll shotgun a beer with you. And I'll provide the beer. I'll yeah. shotgun a Ryan Coke with you and I'll provide the Ryan Coke. I will. And, and, and I'm sorry for the people that have already come on. But if you uh, if you come on this trip and you and it's the four of you or whatever it is, uh, I will. The pregame beers are on me. And the trip, the trip postgame dart is on me. Oh, there. Yes. <laughs> when you're back in the Edmonton airport, safe and sound, you're waiting for your No, Uber. no, no. That night. So Jay's offering you your pregame beers. I am offering with me. You, you got to come yeah. find me and I'm not going to hide. Just come with me. I don't want to be alone. I'm offering you a shotgun with me, which yeah. is not that good. But yeah. Chalmers is offering you a cigarette after the game. Well, no. And the Ryan Coke. I'll, Feel I'll free definitely- to watch me shower. It's lovely. Okay. There's that. Something to think about. Okay. Maybe while good. smoking. We'll I will to- smoke and drink and shower. You can watch it all. You're going to keep the smoke going in the shower? Of course. You're a gentleman. Mm-hmm. All right. Think about it. Something to think about. So I've never been on a nation vacation where you guys actually go to a hockey game, but, and I know that the last Toronto one was in a box, but like it, when you sit, every seat is a box at the Mullet arena. So that's the thing. When you sit in, like, are this, are the tickets usually, if there's 20, is it four rows of five? Is it like two rows of 10? Is it one row of 20? You can have the middle seats. They probably did because we're 50. So that's probably like two rows of 25 or, or maybe two or three rows. I went and looked on, um, on Ticketmaster right now for the tickets I game, 300 us. Oh yeah. That's uh, 240, but I don't think that's in our area. I think I think our area is like 300. Mm. So again, quick conversion, your M check math, about $400 Canadian, 425 Mondo. Canadian. Yeah. That right there, when you look at the cost of the trip, flights, hotel, and that ticket. Yeah. That's come join us. If you're thinking about it, please come join us. Transportation to and from the airport in Phoenix as well. So We've that never right not there. sold out a trip. So that's why I'm feeling like I just memories that'll last that a lifetime. Forward. Yeah. Or memories you may not have in the morning. If you you can it. also meet Mr. and Mrs. Chalmers. They're you coming can too. call Rick a bitch to his face, Hammer Hamilton. He'll probably knock you out though. He's quite jacked. <laughs> yeah, he's he very is, swollen these days. He is a, very strong. My mom, I got to tell you this because it's really- I can't wait to hang out with mama. It's really game. sweet because like my dad really is just like, you know, I don't, I don't think we'll go to the game. You just go with Aaron and the kids and stuff. And I know my mom really wanted to go. And like- you know, she, she, she's like, they leave for six months to Phoenix. They lose, miss a lot of memories with the kids. And so we gave them the tickets for Christmas. And when my mom opened it, she got a little teary. I'm not going to lie. Cause she was just like, she just, She's just like now thinking about, oh, these kids are going to be in Phoenix with us. We're going to go to a hockey game. I really want to. And she got teary eyed straight up. Nice. Mommy. Yeah. It's going to be great. Think of someone you could give this trip to who would also have that kind of reaction, nation citizens. Yeah, you're not going to get this opportunity to go to Mullet. I don't this think might this chance. might be the last chance. Yeah. Yeah. Moving That's to the Salt whole, Lake City. That's the whole thing. Yeah, I great am time to so put that. So excited out. after hearing people that went on the Flames Nation trip, uh, their experience in the Mullet Arena. I am jacked. Frank basically said they're moving. Yeah, they are. Frank said like 90 some percent chance. The, the coyotes, Salt Lake coyotes are going to be in Salt Lake city. Salt yeah. Lake city. vacation to Utah. Why out. wouldn't they want a new team so they can split up that $600 million franchise? Cause I think they know 33 teams is an ugly, weird number. And they should probably contract instead of expand. Patrick Ewing's estate is suing and state fair. <laughs> He's not He's dead still alive. Yeah, <laughs> I see <laughs> Patrick Ewing. I understand. 
Remember those shoes had 33 in the back? Oh, yeah, I had a of pair. Of course, those were you black. Pair, you, what color are you? Black, so they're white? black with purple rating. In what grade? Uh, it was in junior seven. high. Yeah, of course it was. I want to seven, say eight or nine. Eight or nine. Because grade nine having U wings or U wings or however they pronounce it. Didn't even play basketball, basketball, but I needed a pair of Patrick Ewings. That's pretty boss. I know. There was a kid in grade Should've nine. Should have gotten Jordans. Probably would be worth a lot of money. <laughs> retro sixes. I still no. want to get a pair of retro sixes. There was a kid in our school in grade nine. We were in grade eight, got Ewings. I remember watching him play basketball at intermission and just being like, imagine having it all. Imagine having those shoes. When you're that age. A pair of shoes will deal you into a different social oh, circle. It's, yeah. Dude, yeah. I got the teal and black Reebok pumps when they came out. Damn. Ooh. You pump them up before you walk out. I, am, I yeah, am also in the market for a pair of retro pumps. I would love a pair of pumps. Yeah. Would you pump them up before you walk around? Have to. Oh, yeah. I got it. Of Didn't course. you hear the rumor, yeah, though, when you were a kid that it was like terrible for your feet to pump your shoes up? No. no. You never heard that? No. Restrict uh, blood flow, I would imagine. Well, this is this is pre-internet. So it's just be. What would you pick up at the bus stop? You know, that's how the Marilyn Manson thing went around. <laughs> I was years, just years. thinking of that because I saw a meme where it was like the greatest feat known to man <laughs> yeah, was before to be internet. Every, the rumor being spread through every junior high oh. in North America <laughs> that oh, yeah. Marilyn Manson took out a rib. And he was oh, the guy for a singular years. purpose. <laughs> and that and that rumor lived until <laughs> lived forever. Like, did you ever I hear, remember that when I was in junior high? Did you hear though that he was also the guy from the Wonder Years yes. at the same time? But that's, like there was two things about Marilyn Manson. Looks, so like the similarities it did. were uncanny. Of course. But I heard the information in one rumor that one Marilyn Manson's yep. Paul from the Wonder Years, and two he had a rib removed. And I was like, I gotta go sit down. There's a lot of news. <laughs> Who's got you in? Yeah, Paul. Yeah, let me pump these I shoes knew, up. I knew, I knew Paul Piper was up to something. Add to him. You know, substance. All the people on that show are a serial killer. Everybody on that 70 show is a serial killer. It ain't good. Well, where are they now? It ain't good. Although Fred Savage looks the exact same. But remember why he's not allowed on TV sets no, no more? I have no idea. I'll give you a hint. Well, it's probably not good. I'll Google in my own time. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. but it's better not. And yet. on maybe. Oh, that is. Not you know, the more company more Oh, that was funny. Why his career? You know what? I'm the just, wizard. That was a great movie. Ooh, misconduct. Ah. Ah, there he is. <laughs> wizard was a good movie when they yeah. unveiled Mario three. Unveil Mario three. Oh my Earth god! Shattered. Wait, there was applause in the theater. The, uh, wasn't the power glove also unveiled in that movie? Yep. Uh, they used it, and it was. I don't know if it was unveiled though. Yeah, because Mario three. Remember was that unveiled. cool kid that was like the best of the best. Yeah, he would play the power glove. What, yeah. The theater that I was in because it was a birthday party. That was one of those foundational moments of my life when they showed on screen like the opening. S- like menu kids in the theater cheered. Woo! I love that movie. That was a good was a movie. Great movie. Uh, movie. It's called the wizard. And he, this kid, he's like a little kid, but he's amazing at playing video games. It's so he like, ends up, it's like rain, like children rain. Yeah, man. You're right. yeah. It's like junior. Like what game do they play to get there? It's like donkey Kong or something. It's a weird game. <laughs> I don't know, a bunch of, he's playing games all along the way, isn't he? Zelda. We would now say that, Zelda. There was Zelda. There was Zelda. There was Zelda we would now say your M check that this kid's on the spectrum, but at the time he was just locked yeah, in. For the yeah. champ, for the champ, <laughs> for the championship in the movie and this game hadn't even come out yet. They played super Mario yeah. three. And that's how they unveiled and, the and game. Somehow he knew where all the warp whistles were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's that smart though. He'd know. You guys watching this? Uh, There's Ninja Gaiden was in there. There was Super Mario was in there. I don't know if you guys follow Tetris news like I do. That kid. That kid that finished it? So you, you can't beat Tetris. And there's Russians that have tried in the kill 80s. Screen. You went to the people. 16-year-old kid did it. And was like, it's not that hard. That's like there's a documentary How called. How fast is it going? His actions per minute is just. They there's, basically just toggle their thumb back and forth constantly. And then with their other thumb, they're just dropping blocks. Like it's. It's insane to watch their technique. I saw a video how to do it. There's a documentary called The King of Kong. I, oh, yes. So good. So it is so good where a it talks about going quarters. to the fucking kill screen at the end. It's fascinating to watch them go. There's a lot of controversy. Tons. I love Billy the Mitchell. politics. Yeah, Billy Mitchell, the he hot may, sauce king. He may make a delicious hot sauce, but Oof. I don't know if you can trust his video game. But antics. Billy Mitchell expected to win. Yes. He had the a doctor videos the and the one. general system fuckery. It's got everything. The referee the guy. He was in his yeah. pocket. Sorry, is this called a fistful of quarters or is this called King Kong? It's, it's called, King of it, Kong. It, it, King, King of Kong. Kong. And then and then what's the two dots? Hyphen. Oh, Bowen. I've yeah. seen a this. Fistful I, of quarters. Yeah. It's I'm going to watch this because I'm all caught up it's on so my favorite good. new show, which is the only thing I watch other than sports right now. Have you guys seen this game show called The Floor? 
No. No. Rob Lowe hosts it. There's 81 spaces on the floor and each one has your own, the person who's on it, desired specialty topic. It can be automobiles. It can be moguls like Jeff Bezos. It can be junk drawer items. It can be college football teams. 2006 Cup Rush brands. So when the randomizer comes and it lands on your partial of the floor, you can pick from one of the the topics around you and you battle them. You go up to the front, you get 40 seconds and on the screen, you just, it goes back and forth and you have to name them. If you have to pass, you lose three seconds. If you win, you have to inherit their topic from that square. Okay. Oh, okay. it's Sounds really. And then, so now you go down there and you have two squares or you can keep playing and you can just keep getting squares. It is Awesome. You guys will love it. The floor. I mean, yeah, the floor is kind of so just you can stream it. But so the reason that I brought this up was because this guy, this older man, 58 years old, went against this young girl and she had like uh, technology was the category. And they were like, oh, I hope your age doesn't come play in this. And she's like, it doesn't matter. I know everything. And she lost simply because of one item. And she had no idea what it was. And it was an eight track player. Oh, uh, she didn't know what an nope. She had no idea. She was, and it was, oh man, you guys, it's only four episodes in it's easily bingeable. And I guarantee watch the first one. You will not stop. So it's just a game show. It's just a game show. Right. Chalmers. Okay. That's a show designed for like hospital waiting rooms and like old ladies going to get dentures. Yeah. It's not supposed to be your demo, but they don't know the people your age watch. I sit shows. there with my kids and we play against each other. Like we, we, we all try to, you know, um, say the thing as fast as we can. Do. Now, what if I don't have a family? Will I still enjoy this? You're going to love it. Yeah. You and Amber can do it together. Oh yeah. I do. Yeah, you live with, yeah, I know. Well, thank God she doesn't listen. Only that one time. Yeah. Other than that, I've blocked it from her podcasting. So I, I love that we've avoided we're at any minutes. Oilers. No, we're not at 40 minutes. We're at 32 because we started late. We started very late. Oh, good. So Oilers. No, Kay. first we're going to step aside for a quick break. All right. Back on the real life podcast. Okay. So Oilers are one six in a row. Whatever. I've got some to talk about. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I Did actually you? do have some. It's Oilers related. Is it Chalmers and his love I of can't stew? get this out of my head. And I know even suggesting this. And not to say I have any credibility, but whatever little credibility I have, especially with how this is going to get clipped up, I'm going to look like a fucking idiot. Oh, I like this. Hell yeah. <laughs> Just suggesting this. Clip this. Pal. But this is what the Oilers should do. <laughs> Here we go. What do you think? I think they should do. Trade oh, my God. No. Oh. Throw the next game. No. <laughs> Call and him Jack Campbell. This is, uh, this is a trade deadline maneuver. Oh, I was going to say load, load management on and the streak on their own terms by an own goal. Call up Jack Campbell and say, you know, what? 16 in a row is impressive, but we're taking it to another gear. Yeah, if Jack, Jack gets 17, has 20 and four his value and trade it. Who do you think we should go after? Oh, my God. This I, is the this is the silver bullet. Is he on Frank's trade targets list? Silver bullet. This, this is a silver bullet trade. Nick Dowd. Are you ready? Yeah. Sidney Crosby. Oh, Jesus Christ, Jay. <laughs> now drink the Kool-Aid with me for a sec. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing that's <laughs> ever talked about on this drink, podcast. No, no, oh, no. Well, this is why I think. But like now, but now, now, now that we've established it's dumb, let's see it through. <laughs> this is okay? going to go so far. Right. Right. I've already made two arguments for it in my head. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> here, here's the thing. Obviously, Dubis is under a lot of pressure and trading Crosby under his watch is suicide. Understood. But. His retool on the fly is not working. They're not going to make the playoffs this year. They might. Uh, fringe. Like, yeah. this all comes, yeah. Like, if they're, like, if they're closer-ish ish right now, if they're definitely, like, not that close in a month, you got to you gotta consider this. And, it, and it's probably maybe because Sidney Crosby might ask for it. I know he's that pro. He's, 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 he's building up the blueprint that we want Connor McDavid to follow of, like, you stay put in your city and you put on for your city and you help build that city and that team and stay loyal. I get it. But Crosby hasn't won a cup in a while, and it's not even that long. But he's got one and a half years left in this deal. Yep. Right. And would he resign in Pittsburgh? Probably. Yep. You could always resign, go back to Pittsburgh. So there's this interesting two year window. We also have an interesting two year window or year and a half window. So Crosby wants to win another cup. This retooling that Dubas is trying to do on the fly isn't working. We can all admit that. 
So I think you can make a case to uh, to get Sidney Crosby out of Pittsburgh or convince because Sidney of his Crosby, want to win a cup. His want to win a cup. Interesting. And there's two players I think he would love to play with in this league. One being his boy McKinnon in Colorado, which we've already heard the rumors speculate around that. His boy from Cole Harbor. The other one would be Connor McDavid. Now, you must think there is like this internal, deep internal competition between Crosby and McKinnon to be the all-time greatest hockey player to come from Cole Harbor. So why the fuck would he want to go and help the Nate dog? See, just think there's that little like in the back of his head. He's his boy, <laughs> but does he want to see him be better than what Sidney Crosby is? He always wants to be like one or two cups. Because then below. whose cup is it? Is it McKinnon's cup exactly. or Crosby's cup? Exactly. So it, it totally makes it, it, it makes it a polarizing subject. Just fuck that off and just even avoid the debate. <laughs> Let him try to go win his own cups and come play with Connor McDavid. Right. This is for one and a half seasons. If you want to win a cup, you'll have two cracks at it by coming to Edmonton. By coming to Edmonton with with you got Dry Seidel, McDavid, Sidney Cross. Two questions. One one but, serious question. Yeah. But why in, not? In, I'm, yeah, buddy, I don't I, hear crazy I, words. I, I'm no, not I like, know it's dumb, but like I think if you that, talk it through, like it seems plausible. Tyler has a look on his face like when he starts to talk, the first thing that's gonna come out to, from his mouth is this might be the single dumbest thing yes. ever. He's okay. picking and on his thumb. Fine. He's that's doing fine. the thing he does. Where he We're not going to let him. I know that. That was that. that that's. <laughs> I opened the door with. We're that. not going to let him but do now that let's yet. See it through. Okay. So one question in my mind, and this has to be answered. Yes. In Sidney Crosby's mind, does leaving there to win a cup and then coming back or retire. hurt hurt his legacy? No, with no, Pittsburgh? no, no. He will have a statue. Like he's done everything. He's played 16 years or whatever it is there. Like he's done enough. This is now just like everyone, like even the people of Pittsburgh might even agree. Be like, yeah, Sid, go get that cup. Do you want two cracks, you. two legit cracks at the cup in the next 18 months or none in Pittsburgh? Exactly. And that, that is a realistic situation because the situation Dubis has put the penguins in cap wise, they don't have any real flexibility to do anything. It's not go target Jake Gensel for us. Cause he he's a rental. He's a pure rental. Cause he's going to go chase his bag that he deserves. How do you he's make the money work? Mr. Downton. Well, that's, is there players this is, involved this is, in this deal? Well, you, you have to do whatever it takes in that situation. <laughs> if you get Sidney Crosby mm-hmm. and you, pr- and maybe you can get him retained. I don't know, which is even crazy to think retaining Sidney Crosby. How many but like draft you, if, picks? If, if, if you could, if, if you can get Dubas to a <laughs> land at that destination, you, I think you can accept Crosby into thinking it's a good idea. Like, I don't even know what it would cost, but should you, should you not just try to have the conversation? So are we going to watch all-star weekend <laughs> with a little bit of a heightened, just, Hey, Oh my God, they're sitting next to each other on the bench during no, the skills competition. If Connor McDavid <gasps> had one what job are they to do talking this week, about? It is to fucking, what are they how talking best about? Sydney. I'd like to see you in front of Connor pitching this. Cause I don't think, Connor would want it. You burst into the room with a lot of fanfare, which is, it startled everybody. Yes. But then the, there's a slow like, rising road of history and logic let's here. Yeah, there's, there's a, that's the thing. There's lot. There's, there's actually logic behind it. Now, Tyler, walk me through and, and, and dismiss this amazing idea. He's not leaving Pittsburgh. And that's why he doesn't want to win cups. What it's like when someone goes, Oh, McDavid's just going to sign in Toronto. He can't wait to leave. This is, and it drives 30, us nuts. No, no, this is 36 year old Connor. McDavid. 16 years. In the and team. it's like, you know what? Connor's done it. Like, let him go play home. Like we would, we wouldn't, we wouldn't if it's reversed, if he'd won two cups, with if Edmonton, I had a dollar for every time I heard of a player that would never leave their place and then goes to leave. Like just did Joe Thornton get booed in, in San Jose when he left? Maybe I doubt it. Oh, Joe Thorne, when he left San Jose, yeah. To win a cup in Toronto? Okay. I get what you're saying. The year and a half thing, whatever. (laughs) It is career suicide for Kyle Dubas to be the guy who traded Sidney Crosby. I think he's already committed it. Because like he's fucked for the next little bit. Getting Carlson was stupid retrospect, right? Yeah, very dumb. And they're going to lose Gensel. Told you all it was dumb last year. Yeah, that's sure, whatever. We can't overrule the trade. So, like, like, it. Dubas is not going to win a cup in the two year or year and a half window that Crosby is going to be with the team. But they're they have no choice but to keep going for it, Jay. They're they need to no because right, it's not bet. working. You, you, the, the the ship is going. Melkin's thirty seven. Crosby's thirty six. Yeah. Latang's thirty six. 
Like it's not working this year. They brought in Carlson. That's an albatross contract. They're in like, it's, I, I can't see a path where they can retool to make it happen next year. They tried this year. It didn't work. They're going to lose Gensel. <laughs> Remember so, how when Carlson so what went they to San Jose, five million bucks. Remember? This is the kind of stuff Rick does. So here's where I just want to see it through. <laughs> like, like, shouldn't you try? Like, shouldn't you try? That's all yes, I'm saying. Is the yes. like, Shouldn't you try? Here's where you could maybe get Sid or get this whole thing going. Is kind of like you hinted at. If Duba sits down with Sid and goes, "Listen, let's just do this thing on the fly, real quick." All right, Sid. I'm going to move you. I'm going to get three first. I'm going to move Gens. I'm going to get two more. I'm going to move out, guys. You come back when you're a UFA in 2026 at age 38, and we'll be ready for one last cup run with Sid's return. But for the next two years, we're going to stay. So, Sid's okay. return. So one, Sid's return. So, one question, so one question there. Then when Sidney Crosby is an oiler and it's draft day 2025, is him and Dubas on the phone being like, yeah, I really like this. Like, is he helping with the part of it? What if in two years, the team fucking isn't even close? Yeah, I mean, then But, that, but then but. he doesn't resign, but like... It's because, but you also don't know if Crosby's gonna <laughs> resign anywhere. What would he rather? If he win, if he wins one more cup, he might be happy and retire. He's ahead of Nate too. Then yes, but what, well, what does he want more? Is. This is where Jay. I think there's something in the back of the limbic brain, the lizard. What would Sidney Crosby want more? P- pillar to post with the Penguins or two more kicks in a cup. I know when he's got all his injuries. He's got all the money in the world. He has no That's reason to get up in the morning. Talk. That's, uh, What's going to get him out of bed for the next 18 like, months? Did you want to be Sidney Crosby six time cup winner or cool. five time cup play in Canada? Like that's oh, like, I'm star- he's I'm building be- out his legacy. Like that's the whole, like when you, I'm I've a been thinking about this for three days. <laughs> Cause I said it as a joke in my mind. Like, wait a minute. You tell no, yourself let's jokes. Just see this through. Sometimes. You tell, so you tell, tell yourself oh, trade so great if They always got Sidney Crosby. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> what if they did? Sitting over there laughing this whole- And that's a silver bullet. Bag milk, you've been sitting over there laughing this whole time. Uh-huh. Thoughts? A couple of things. One, I've upgraded my seats to Toronto. On I the saw that. You've been on your credit card. Very, very pumped on that. You upgrade? I wasn't able to upgrade. Well, somebody got an offer. Second, <laughs> I would, Jay. I'd love it. I love the idea of Sid with the Oilers. Uh, I don't think it's- possible given the players and picks who would probably take to acquire said future. How many first family. would you pay Jay? What would be your trade? But I'd love it. I think if there's a way to make it happen next I'd love three, it. Well, next thing, three like, years, it, it would probably be your two firsts and you have to figure out how to make the money work. So would you do and prospects? So would you do your next three firsts? Dylan Holloway. No, Jack Campbell, not Dylan Holloway though, but you're getting Sidney Crosby and Jack Campbell's leaving and Jack Campbell. You can leaving. make the okay. money work. Okay. You might have to. Campbell, Fogel, Holloway, and three first. Campbell. For Sid. At how much retained? The guy with the ideas Straight even off. sitting here thinking about this right now? Well, I, it's, it's, but I, I'm, I'm trying to be as ticket. realistic about it as possible. Oh, now we're being realistic. <laughs> 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 I'm trying. <laughs> Come on, guys. If we're going to talk about acquiring Sidney <laughs> Crosby, I mean, we need to be realistic. Let's not be crazy now. fucking time. If he was just a straight up rental, it would just cost you two firsts. Yeah. Plus. So, so three firsts, you probably can't throw Campbell in that deal. Why not? Because they're already in cap hell. How are they going to take on the hit? It's even money. They're getting Holloway for taking Campbell. And three firsts. And three firsts for Sid. I think I think you try to do it without the Campbell P. Like, obviously, that's a wishful thing, but I don't know if that's realistic. Yeah, I think there's one way to play this out, and that's to tweet at the Penguins, yeah. go around Ken Holland, put the trade out there, yeah. spell it out to them, then it's tweet at Crosby. And refer to your original tweet to the Penguins. Could you imagine if he liked it? The second Ooh. angle, though, is if David Musil will let Crosby wear his 87. You know? Interesting point. Right? Who? David Musil. Who? Yeah, something to think about. Imagine Crosby's like, I'll come play in Edmonton, <laughs> but I insist on wearing 94. I'd be like, oh, tells, no. Tells Connor, he goes, I'm wearing 94. I'll rent the now. man lift to get it. Wait, is it up in the rafters? No. Like, no. is it not? No. Like, <laughs> They're like, I'm in, I'm with you. I, I know it's like getting Dubas to want to do it is the biggest challenge, but like, is it really not that crazy? Like the circumstance, if you say Sid's return, Sid, you leave, you get two cracks of the cup. You're back in 18 months and we'll sign you till you're 70. Yeah, you're JR, you're a penguin. You're yeah. going to the all-star game this weekend. 
Kind of. You're going to Toronto this weekend. For sure. You will potentially be in a bar in the vicinity. You see Kyle Dubas. He's sitting at the bar at the wood. Just ordered an old fashioned. Yeah. Say regarding my tweet. Let's just say. Probably a smoked old fashioned. Well, knowing him. I tweeted you earlier, Kyle. Fake eyeglasses. (laughs) Do you walk? You (laughs) do you walk over there and say, hear me out. You are holding back Sydney's legacy, Kyle. Cuck. Going to be call him a walk, cock. Kyle. No, no, he just sneezed. Yeah, a little bit. I'm with Jay. Interesting. I, I, I mean, I, 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 but I'm trying to like not be like Homer Oilers on this, but like, does it? Not? Oh no, yeah, you're totally I mean, seeing it from the view of the Penguins like, too, like, and how that, that would benefit them. Well, but it, well, <laughs> they, they've already fucked themselves, and we've been in situations <laughs> where we've been fucked, and then get fucked uh, more with the deadline and with the shit shit we have. to A whole do. lot of fucking. They're fucked. Mm-hmm. They need to do some fucking. Your Ram check can I ask We've got to go and do one of these things. This is what happens. We have yet to fuck, though we have been fucked. Your Ram check yes. can I ask a couple of questions about hockey? Sure. So Carlson leaves Ottawa, goes to San Jose, signs a massive ticket deal. San Jose wins nothing, really, yep. right? Yes. Despite having arguably the best defenseman in the league. Yep. Then he goes, parachutes into Pittsburgh, fireworks, huge deal. He'd gone to shit and then came back in his production, right? Yeah. But the Penguins stink. Bad. So Carlson, he had a hundred point season in San Jose. They came like second or third last. Crosby having a good year though. Yep. But the point is, yeah, you're getting to something with Carlson. Weird. How can you have the best defenseman in the league play that many years with no real, like not even just playoff success, like no real success at all. It is weird. What's the farthest being one with Ottawa? Do you go to the, do you go to the cup conference finals? finals. <sighs> conference? Yeah. I went to conference cup? finals. Remember they lost in game seven. OT Kunit scored the winner. That's what cooked them. The they hamburglar went- year. Mm. Anyone watch that Alexander Dig documentary yet? Where no. is it? Are you? Where do I Prime. find it? Prime. All right, I'm Prime. Prime. I'm in. It's got to be a bit of a shot to the gut if you're Alexander Dig that they made a documentary about you in 2023. Good news. It's like we've got good news and we've got bad. The news. bad news is they basically call you the worst bum in the history you're, of skating. You're from the future, sitting down Alexander Dig at draft day, being like, "Hey man, show me a documentary about your career in 2023 I and 2024." It. He's like, "Hell yeah." My cousins love the senators. They lived in Ottawa. I'll never forget going to their house and they'd cut the front page out of the Ottawa sports section and like attach it to the fridge. And he was riding in like an open buggy, like Cinderella through Ottawa on draft day. Cool. Like waving. He had like a draft parade. Damn. Oh, well, uh, Oilers won 16 games in a row. And when they next play, they'll have a chance to tie the longest winning streak in NHL history, just as we all drew it up. I loved that in the last minute of Saturday's game, Jack Michaels just let the crowd do it. Didn't say a word yep. for the last minute. It was awesome. I wish I was there. I saw your rant on Insta, your M check, and I'm still recovering from you calling the end of the McDavid era mm-hmm. and two American Thanksgivings in a row declaring us fucked. Yes. But I also saw a hilarious look in your face of like, Sometimes being super rational and expecting things to go okay is wrong and amazing shit happens. And you have two enormous heaters in one season. At the beginning of the season, remember I even said, because you were like, Tyler, you're going to tell us we're fucked by American Thanksgiving. And I said, I promise no matter what this year, I won't do it. It's almost like the hockey gods were like, oh, <laughs> like we're going to make it so bad that yeah. he goes back on that. Yeah. And that's what they did. But now it's so good. We're loving life. I was, just, I was never in doubt against the Predators. Never no, a doubt. No. Once Nuge scored that goal, it was like, cool, 16 yeah. in a row, lock it up. Like, they're just in this space right now where one or two things go well early on, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, cool. And I think it's actually extremely unfortunate that they've got nine days between games. I think if, see, in my point. They're healing. Yeah. But they're like, they're also comboing. That's how my you heal. The other day was like, if this was a <laughs> six, seven game heater, I would be like, yeah, damn, what a bad time for this to come. A, a whole month and a bit of winning, which is amazing. The board yeah. outside in the office where it's just nothing but dubs. Love to see it. A I perfect January. I never in my wildest never. dreams. So There's that meme that was going around. I don't know who made it, but it was just like, did your team lose in 2024? And it's yeah. every team. And then the Oilers. No. Pretty Love. great. Pretty great. Fantastic. Um, all right. So we are going out to Toronto. Uh, myself, Jay, BM for the end of the With week. upgraded seats. BM has upgraded I'm pissed seats. off about it. I didn't even get an email. Well, kind of garbage. Maybe, maybe I've already been upgraded. I don't know. Find out. Oh, yeah. Check your app. Um, so we're going to be doing a bunch of content from there from Sponsorship X. <laughs> we're at Sponsorship X doing some live shows. Yeah. Sports media conference connected to the All-Star game. Hell yeah. We have infiltrated. 
Uh, there will still be a Thursday episode, though. I might just be doing it a little bit differently, but either way, um, good stuff. So. What is the plan going to be for those of us? Chalmers, I don't imagine. Oh, we to, are not involved. You're not going to sponsorship X? No. I see. <laughs> no. I think we're going to do an interview episode on Thursday, so stay tuned Ooh. for that. Um, so there you go. Are we excited? Uh, I'm excited for, and this is weird, but the skills competition it, and even the one in the NFL this Thursday. Uh, like I love uh, people always think they're cheesy and they're stupid. I just like watching the dudes be dudes and interacting with each other going out. Even if the actual events are stupid, just like, well, I don't think it's stupid. I think it's actually like more serious. Like it's going to be more serious this year, the way they've well, set it up. Like I'm very intrigued by the NHL uh, skills. Me too. Here. Yeah. So like the 12 players doing pretty much every event and competing only for themselves to win a million bucks. That's legit. Can I ask a question about football? I didn't know that. I saw that you hate the Super Bowl matchup. Yes, I do. I'm curious because I don't know. I Why is there no intrigue why the best team in the NFC going up against the defending champs? Because uh, I hate the Kansas City Chiefs. He, he's the only one. Okay. No, I'm not. There are a lot of people saying this Except, is a Can you tell me matchup. this, Chalmers? Because I saw his tweet and I was just like, huh. There's no underdog. It's like a perfectly constructed football no team. No underdog. Against, against a perfectly constructed quarterback. And it's the Chiefs. The quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers was chosen with the Dead very last, last pick Mr. of the draft. Relevant. And it's called Mr. Yeah. He is about as underdog as they come. System QB. How many rushes? Whatever, man. He, he does a shit ton last Yeah. Night. When he needed to make plays, he made plays yeah, with his feet. I could have ran faster than him. Oh, my God. Uh, so I was just confused. This, is, why, I was this like, is sour oh. grapes. Don't listen to him. Okay. The last player okay. in the draft is in the Super Bowl. System Here's, QB. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because of the final four teams to have a bid to make it in the Super Bowl, there was the defending champs with Patrick Mahomes, who... And Taylor Swift and Javis Kelsey, everybody is sick of them. I get it. We're all sick of them. The libs are fierce. Nobody wants to see them anymore. They don't want to see Patrick Mahomes win another Super Bowl. It's the same thing all the time. He's the most consistent, inevitable thing in the NFL right now. Right? So people cheer against that. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. The 49ers were playing against maybe the best sporting story of the year. In sports, the Detroit Lions not making the playoffs in 31 years, making it to the conference final. It's an amazing story. So then they lose. So now you've got the two teams that kind of one beat the underdog and now you got the 49ers. Oh, great. Like they're not flashy. Yeah. Right. They're not flashy. They're just hard work and greedy. CMC is flashy. He, he is. But I mean, I... His interviews are boring. There's only one player on that team who has a personality is George Kittle, right? Love George. And then you've None got, you've got against the Kansas City Chiefs, which everybody's just kind of sick of. So That's I understand it. I understand it. But when you really look at it, this was the odds on favorite matchup going into the season. Would you be excited if the cup final this year was Colorado Tampa Bay again? I wouldn't care. I stopped watching at that point. That's kind of where I'm at is like, if at least if it was the how the much of this was because the bills lost. Yeah. hundred percent. Decent amount. I hate the chiefs. I also uh, watched the game against the Ravens and the Ravens blew it multiple times. They in the end stunk. Zone. But like, I was just maybe a little bit excited for lions chiefs, which would have been this awesome David versus Goliath thing. The Niners beating the chiefs is like, Oh yeah. Great team. Beat a great team. Like it'll be fine. I'll watch it. I'm sure I'll enjoy Remember, the game. Casey was plus one eighty five to win yesterday. Yeah, books disrespected. Patrick Lions, Patrick. Chiefs, all time color game. It would have been great. Blue versus red, beautiful. Yeah. Now it's like red and white versus red so and gold. The Super Bowl logo. It was false because it was supposed to be red. It was red and purple, uh, and so it was going to be the Ravens, Niners. If it was to stick to that, gotcha. um, and the Ravens should be there. Yep. They absolutely should. There is one thing that keeps costing wide receivers, and that is extending the football at the goal line. Just go the hell down on the first to have a new set of downs and pump that ball in by running it. But these receivers, they're young. They want to get the touchdown. They want to make a play. They extend their arms. And that's two weekends in a row where a ball's gotten batted out of the hands and got in the end zone for a touchback and cost the team a touchdown. Kansas city chiefs survived it, but the Ravens couldn't. Yeah. Anyways, everything I say is just sour Bills fan. So it doesn't matter. Here's a storyline for you. I'm Sorry. No, go ahead. Remember the brother of Patrick Holmes? 
Remember that guy? Yeah, Remember how annoying that guy was? see him a little bit now. Think of how much he wants to be sitting next to Taylor Swift oh, and they won't allowed. let him. Yeah, they're not allowed. There was, there was only that one where they were doing a dance. And he and was standing up top, right? Yeah. Looking all weird. Yeah. And they're like, no more Jackson. Yeah. So think about it. He wants to be involved. He's eating him inside. They and let I, him on the sidelines. They let him embarrass himself. They let, I, who's the only person in the world more... Tough enough to deal with that is Taylor Swift's people. That's so what I was. Just, we're not fucking around. Taylor Swift's people are like, there is one thing you that's bad for our brand. There. And yep. that is Jackson Mahomes yep. anywhere close to Taylor Swift. But he's still in the box and, like, and he wants attention yeah, so, bad, so bad. And it's like eight feet away from him. But somebody has told him, do not. If you look at that quarterback documentary series, it was always Jackson Mahomes next to Brittany Mahomes, and they yeah. would do their little dances. Yeah. And now Brittany's next to how do you Taylor think? Swift. How do you think the Brittany Mahomes the Jackson Mahomes third. relationship is right now? Oh, mm-hmm. the upgrade! So, so good. Or this trade for Sidney Crosby. Or this trade for Sidney Crosby. Do it. Super Bowl canceled. I'm happy. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. You're not an Usher fan, eh? Oh God, no! Even the halftime show doesn't get me going. Oh my God. I sure is good, man. His there, residency in Vegas apparently is like bananas. There's this comedian that I and I don't want to get to. I, I saw a clip on TikTok or something, and he asked this young kid in, this, in the uh, audience, "Hey, did you know Beyonce was part of a group?" And he's like, "Oh my god, you don't know that Beyonce was part of a group?" And then like goes on this like long. I sure does. You seen that? No, no, no. no, no about I just comedian, I'm, I'm not, well. Now about, I've said it. You'll hear it on your phone. You'll see about it. a kid knowing that she was in Destiny's Child. Yeah, but then, and then he goes on like that. Yeah, long. It was yeah. Fucking hilarious. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, all right, okay. we do got to wrap up here. Yeah, I got to go. I got to be somewhere in 23 minutes. All right, okay, that is a wrap. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll be back later on in the week.